unfortunately, we just have 15 minutes, as you know. So um, in the papers, you will find uh, a lot of inf information about the methods and uh, the underlying assumptions behind these topics, which are very complex. Um, it, the first paper um, was very interesting and presents an interesting framework based on the Indonesian case, which is trying to take into account the resilience of communities to absorb, self-organize, and learn from experiences in relation to disasters. The second paper was a, a very interesting uh, study about the impact of microcredit in terms of natural disaster recovery of households in rural Bangladesh. Uh, Professor Chowdhury finds non-linear relationship between the amount of credit and disaster loss recovery, which is an interesting thing. And, uh, and of course, the headline was that the banks are not really helping that much in that, in that process. Uh, Professor Agual presents uh, an interesting analysis of disaster risk management um, in the case of Bangladesh as well. And um, I think although um, a Professor Agual didn't have the time to present, but I think in, in one of the interesting things in the paper is that he finds that uh, nearly 10 million people are affected by this normal climatic disasters. And based on his estimations, uh, the increase of the numbers uh, may duplicate by three to five times. So it's, there is important information in the papers. So I would like just to open the session for questions and answers. Um, we can take a few um, of them first, and uh, we can start from, from this side and then move to the next one if there is some questions here. Or we can straight away move to the next column. So yes, please. My name is Nidhi and I'm with the Leibniz University in Germany. I have a question from the Bangladesh uh, speakers about climate-induced disaster and disaster induced by environmental flows. How do you differentiate between the two when you take the such kind of studies into account? And do you think in this con context, natural disaster management program aligns very, uh, very nicely with the climate adaptation programs or climate management programs? And one more quick point is about the access to credit from Jangi, the presentation. Do you think the newer insight of uh, changing from recovery um, loss, uh, credit for recovery loss to credit for insuring, uh, insuring that is more of a preventive measure or a precautionary measure than a curative measure? What's your insight about this? Yeah, thank you. Um, another question? Um, yes, please. Sorry, uh, uh, the microphone is coming. Sorry, sorry yeah, thank you. Uh, John Langmore from the University of Melbourne. Uh, I, I wanted to ask Rianti um, about uh, how you increase um, uh, sensitivity to the possibility of, of, a, of a crisis. Uh, I mean, um, what, what all that you were presenting made a lot of sense. Uh, provided people uh, thought that there was a serious possibility of of, of there being some kind of disaster. Um, but all of us uh, in every country have uh, de de developed a sense of complacency ab ab about the hope that disasters won't strike us. And now it may be that in Indonesia, as you were saying, there's a higher level of risk and, and people are, um, are more... Uh, aware of the possibility of, of, a, of a disaster and in some other countries. But, but I wondered um, uh, what you could say about the level of expectation of the possibility of risk in, in, in Indonesia and whether it's adequate to motivate people to, to act, to prepare for disasters. Thank you, Jan. Yes, please, Imet. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you for this three nice presentation. I have three questions. I will start with the first question. Uh, the framework or the strategy that you propose is really very nice and very well integrated and complete strategy. But I wonder if you don't think that it's too heavy, really, to uh, implement. And maybe there there is a problem of coordination between the three layers, 
and this may really make it not feasible indeed. And um, this is what uh, uh, we may have an idea about any kind of mechanism that can be used really to implement and to succeed that kind of strategy to deal with climate change risk. Uh, the second question for the second presentation is about uh, this market failure. Uh, I wonder if uh, that means the, the lack of uh, capacity to pay back by the farmer may naturally allow any kind of access to credit according to the private uh, low. That's mean. Do you mean by uh, credit? Or do you mean uh, financial support, or do you mean access to the banking sector? Because if, for example, there is no collateral, or there is a issue about uh, land tenure or something like that, this make it completely impossible for the farmers really to access to the uh, banking sector. But if it is about, let's say, financial support from the government, from the international community, from the NGO, this is another issue which is uh, completely different. And for the uh, second, uh, third presentation, uh, as we can see that uh, climate change in Bangladesh takes many, many forms, ranging from drought to floods, cyclones, increasing of salinity, and so on. So uh, I wonder that this framework that you, you propose or the strategy you propose is really feasible. That's mean and if there is enough financial resources to implement that kind of strategy because it is very nice strategy but the problem on the paper is very nice when it comes to implement that strategy we can face many many problems in terms of coordination, implementation, funding and so on. So how realistic that kind of strategy. Thank you. Thank you, Imet. Well, maybe we should take these questions first. Um, shall we start again with uh, Regente first and then move to the right? Um, I'd like to um, respond to John's question um, on, um, let me rephrase the question if and if whether I, I take it correctly from you. So you ask like to what, um, is it, what is the level of expectation on the ability of the community in Indonesia in uh, to prepare for from disasters? Is it was it? Yeah. yeah. So I think um, studies have shown that experiences from disasters or um, community experiences from disasters is the number one um, the number one factor that influence um, um, ability or motivation of community to to prepare for from disasters. And I guess in Indonesia, um, there is this, this um, efforts to build a culture of res resilience by which, um, so we always uh, take example from Japan by which um, we want to internalize uh, disasters as um, a necessary effort or a daily effort for, for us. And I think with the role of uh, media and information, uh, this is, this has been this has been happening, and I think, um, especially after the 2004 tsunami, the, the the community creates demand for government and for other organizations to really um, help them educate from disasters. But um, um, I think, and but this is also vice versa in um, in some countries that or communities that have not um, experienced um, ex disaster, any time of disasters, um, their level of uh, complacency is so high, and um, it can be very. Um, the impact is can be very um, harmful. Uh, one uh, very classic example for this was the 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 number of death uh, from the heat wave in, in England. Um, I'm not sure, I, I wasn't, I'm not sure with the year, but um, the, the key reason by this high number of death was these elderly people, they, they thought that um, they, have, they have survived um, this heat wave before and they say they will uh, survive the, the next heat wave and then and, and after that there are, there are um, quite high number of um, death occurred. And also to answer the second question from um, the second gentleman, um, and that's, I mean, I know I, I realize that this framework is heavy, but I think that's that's the key for, to do PhD. Like you need you need to be integrated. You need to to show a robust mechanism, and you need to show your your steps in developing your method. And this is what I'm proposing as my method. And I know um, that's the next challenge for me um, to. 
uh, on how to think of how to implement it. And in fact, that becomes my next paper rather than saying this is what needs to be done. Um, I'm, I'm identifying uh, what are the possible challenges if we were, um, if we were to implement this. But I guess um, with this framework, uh, there is a, a, a discourse now on transformation and um, so rather than just adapting to like doing this small um, small adaptation um, efforts, why don't we just transform to a different uh, state altogether? And so this is what um, I think I can see my, my research on this framework um, is heading. Thank you. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm not sure whether I have got your question correctly or not. Did you talk about the insurance covers or No, no. In this study, we didn't look at the micro insurance, totally micro finance or credit part. Okay. Did they have any credit or any loans from different sources? This is what we did. And micro insurance coverage is very, uh, from my other experiences, is coverage is very low. So it, some NGOs actually experimented this thing, but they didn't come very well uh, in the field. So in this paper, we haven't. Con we haven't looked at that thing, and I can sh assure you the places where we collected data in those areas, macro insurance coverages were uh, coverage was not there. Okay. Regarding the second um, uh, question, uh, capacity to pay, um, you see, the point is that uh, in in not in Bangladesh, in other developing countries as well, even those households have got the collaterals. They even do not get loans from the former sector financial institutions, sometimes due to cumbersome uh, procedural uh, complexities. Okay, so you see in Bangladesh what happens, 40% people are illiterate. So whenever you go to a bank, you need to fill out so many papers, and some of them, they, even these people, uh, those who have got collaterals, they are not literate, but they don't understand even. And due to this thing, they do not go to the former sector financial institute due to the procedural complexities. And they are forced to go to the informal sectors. Okay, some households, they are going to, uh, those who do not have collateral or in land, uh, they, are, they don't have any option to go to the former sector. But now government has actually, um, has done some reform in the financial sector. Now they are allowing poor households to get loans from commercial banks even without having given any collateral, but up to a certain amount of money. It's like 5,000 taka a loan. You don't need to give any collateral. You go and get it. But still, households are not getting that loan even. Government has allowed the people to open an account only paying 10 taka, which is less than 10 cents. But still, 60 or 70 percent households do not have any bank account at all in the country. So the point is that even even if even if you take a you know uh, uh, do something, but still due to some other reasons, some other factors that are also influencing, and people are not getting loans or even do not have access to the former sector. That's the thing. In this paper, we even talked about any government support, any subsidy, or any relief, anything simply access to credit. We, what we are arguing that if you give them loan immediately after a disaster, they will pay it back later on from their future income. But this access is important. And access, and all the households do not have had enough access to credit uh, immediately after a disaster. And what happens if you don't give an access to credit, these people are forced to sell their uh, assets to recover some of the uh, assets they have lost in the disaster. Mm -hmm. Or they have to take a loan from a money lender uh, which, uh, who charges an interest of 120% or 100% since these households do not have access to former sector where interest rate is 15% only or less than 15%, sometimes it's only 10%. So that's the problem. This is the argument that we have made in the paper. Thank you. Thank you very much for your interesting question or comments. Uh, the first question are about the reduction of sensitivity. Yes, uh, it is possible and uh, 
Bangladesh has, all, has also achieved some success in this direction. For example, in uh, 1970, about 5 lakhs people were died. And uh, later on, 1991, uh, due to Gurki cyclone, about uh, 1.5 lakhs people were died. And uh, recently, two, two, 2007, by Cedar, only about 3,000 3, people were died. And later on, more recently, 2009, from Isla, less than 1,000 people were died. So, of course, it is a success of Bangladesh to reduce sensitivity from cyclonic heat. And uh, most of the success in these directions uh, uh, in, uh, for saving of people, but the other property, for example, agriculture, housing, uh, we are thinking how to reduce the sensitivity from the climatic risk. For example, if we planted the monocot trees, for example, coconut, palmina pump, dead palm, these are very strong. And we have a real investigation from the cyclonic heat areas that uh, all trees are broken, but the monocot trees uh, are still, still alone. They are not broken by cyclonic heat. So if we planted by uh, uh, in the cyclone uh, prone area, if we plant it by this type of monocot trees, the uh, sensitivity of from cyclone heat will be definitely reduced. And another, for example, flood issue, the river bed, uh, most of the river bed of Bangladesh uh, are gradually silted up. So flood risk becoming higher. So, uh, dredging up the river is very important, and uh, in additionally, the embankment along the rivers can reduce the sensitivity from flood. Of course, there are some embankment we built in Bangladesh. That means government has built Bangladesh, and uh, in some area, some areas are protected definitely protected from the flood issue in Bangladesh. And uh, another, the uh, flood or cyclone protection center. This, uh, this is very important. Uh, uh, in previous years, there are few number of cyclone center or flood protection centers, but now Bangladesh government has increased the number of cyclone centers or flood protection centers. And we are rethinking to rebuild or renovate this uh, cyclone center more effectively. How to save uh, the household, household assets, livestock, in, in addition of men or human. So these efforts definitely reduce the sensitivity of climatic risk in Bangladesh. And the another questioner uh, commented about the uh, the heavy the. Uh, uh, is the model is feasible in Bangladesh? Uh, yes, your uh, comment is very realistic. Uh, it needs a long time for total execution of this strategy because of the problem is not for one day. The problem carry. Uh, a hundred years or thousands of years. So we need also a long time to total uh, implication of this policy. Thank you.
Well, thank you very much. Um, we run out of time. Um, I just want to thank you all for coming to the session, and I just want to invite you to join me to thank the presenters for this excellent presentations.